Evet arkadaşlar merhaba nasılsınız? Benim adım Gökberk. Ben Türkçe öğretmeniyim. Sizin Türkçe öğretmeninizim. Tonight uh, we are doing our lesson a little, a little differently this weekend. Normally our live lessons are on Sunday at 7 o'clock Turkish time. But because I have some business to attend to tomorrow, I have changed the date of the live lesson to today. So before we start, I'm going to wait a few minutes maybe to, and do some idle talking so that some people can join the lessons. Okay. Hoş geldiniz. So there are two people, I think, joining the lesson today. Hopefully the number will increase. I don't mind if it's a small group as long as everyone is uh, interacting with me, asking questions and doing the exercises with me. Okay. So today we are going to do the Turkish case markers. I'm sure most of you know the Turkish case markers. So in total, there are how many case markers? Let's count them. So there's the dative case, the locative case, the ablative case, the accusative case, and the instrumental case. So in total, there are five case markers that you need to know. So there are a lot of them, so we won't be able to do all of them today. I'm going to cut this lesson into two parts. So in the first part, I will, in this lesson basically, we will do uh, the locative, the dative, and the ablative. So we will do a quick revision. Then we will do some exercises that I found from some Turkish textbooks. We're going to do a lot of sentence creating. Okay, so we are going to do a lot of sentence creating. We're going to do a lot of free speaking. Hopefully, if you have prior knowledge to the case markers, we will do even more in detailed, more advanced level sentences if you need to. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, this weekend's lesson is special. So normally it's not always Saturday, it's normally Sunday. But if I get a lot of requests from you saying that we should do the live lessons, on Saturday. Merhaba, amin. Hoş geldin. Nasılsın? İyi misin? İyiyim. Teşekkür ederim. So, if there's a lot of requests telling me that we should change the schedule, the date of this live lesson from Sunday to Saturday or maybe another day, we can change it. I mean, we do the live lesson only once a week, so I would like uh, the most amount of people to join the lesson, okay? Merhaba, hoş geldin. Itasco, I, I think I remembered you. So you're one of the uh, unlimited members, right? I forgot, uh, Azeri, my Azeri, Azeri friend. I forgot your name. <laughs> uh, let me check, actually. I think I had your email on. So let me quickly check. Uh, uh, Erkan, right? Erkan. I think your name was uh, Erkan. Hoş geldin. Nasılsın? İyi misin? So now we have two active uh, students. We have four people, but if you're here, please. Hoş <laughs> bulduk Erkan. Nasılsın? İyi misin? So if you're here, please say some hello with for me. Let me see you. Okay. So today's lesson is a beginner lesson, but... It doesn't matter if it's a beginner lesson. So I would like you to make sentences for me when I ask you to make sentences, okay? You can make them as detailed, as advanced as possible. It doesn't matter. Today's lesson is a, a detailed lesson. Tamam. Itasko. I mean, I mean not Itasko. Uh, Erkan. <laughs> okay. So let me share my Google Documents screen with you. Oops. Ah, okay. So... First of all, as I mentioned before, we have, we're going to do today the locative case, the dative case, and the ablative case. Okay, so, oh, another uh, friend of ours. Hoş geldin, Mamudo. Nasılsın? İyi misin? Welcome to the lesson. I think you're joining our lesson for the first time. 
So today we're going to review these three case markers, okay? So let's first remember what each case marker meant. So let's first start with the locative case. So the locative case in Turkish is a suffix that ends with de, da, or sometimes it changes to te and ta. So what do we use the locative case for? Also, welcome, mon si. Hoş geldin, Macaristan'a, hoş bulduk. So, do you remember what the locative case was used for? So, the locative case in Turkish is basically translated uh, to Turkish, I'm not English, as at, on, in. So, the basic usage. I mean, the locative case has a lot of usages. You will see, hopefully, uh, when we start our intermediate level live lessons in the future. Maybe it, it will start this year. I don't know. It depends on how many lessons we do. So it, the basic usage is add on in. So when we did the spatial postpositions, hoş geldin, hoş geldin Fabiola, nasılsın, iyi misin? So when we did, uh, when we do the basic usage, it's add on in. But later we did in the spatial postpositions lesson. If you remember, when we talked about uh, there is something next to something, there is something in front of something. So this is that lot of locative case. Okay, so let's see uh, some basic examples. Okay, so if you want to say, for example, the book is uh, on the table, so how would we say this? So there are two different ways. So if you know how to say it in more uh, intermediate, more advanced way, please try to say the sentences, try to translate the sentence into English. Uh, not English, in <laughs> Turkish. We are doing a Turkish lesson. So let me see how you would translate this sentence into Turkish. Please write your answers in the chat box. I'm looking at the chat box. I want to do an interactive lesson, so I want to see what you say. Okay, so we have an answer from uh, one of our friends, a newcomer, right? Kitap Masada. Huh. So a question, a nice question from uh, Gur Pret. I think a new uh, follower of our channel. So the de, da in Turkish, the locative case. This is called the locative case. It means in English at, on, in. So, for example, as one of our friends here mentioned, if you want to say the book is on the table, we say kitap, masa, then we add the locative case, masa da, right? Kitap, masa da. So the book, and this is the table. Kitap masa. This, this is basically the basic usage, okay? So kitabı masada, Fabiola. So if you want to, for example, uh, show the book as a special book, like a direct object of a sentence, or if it's someone's book. So when you say kitabı, it will basically translate as his or her book is on the table so if you have watched our live lesson on the genitive case and the possessives so this was a lesson for learning how to show ownership his book their house my cat dot dot dot this there's there's a suffix at the end of kitab right kitab plus u so the p here the p sound changes due to consonant assimilation. So because the suffix starts with a vowel and there are certain letters in Turkish, P, P, P, and K that are affected from consonant assimilation. So they would usually change into these letters. So kitab, P becomes kitabu, okay? We have any other questions? I hope not. So accusative case, right? Uh, uh, we can, Actually, 
Fabiola, it depends on whether you want to use it as an accusative case or as a possessive marker. So if it's like an accusative case, then as you mentioned, it's not like a direct object of the sentence, the book. But for example, if there's a hidden uh, personal pronoun, so if it was, for example, onun kitabı masada, here it's his book. Actually, in this sentence, it depends on whether there's a personal pronoun. It can be the book or his book. So Turkish is a really, uh, uh, how would you say it? It can change a lot. Okay, we have a new friend, Salim Mamdapur. Merhaba, hoş geldin. Merhaba, Hindistan. Nasılsın? Hindistan'a hoş bulduk. So, I think you're joining for the first time. Thank you for joining our lesson. So, do you have any questions so far with the uh, locative case, the de, da suffix? And it's a question that our friend Gurpret asked and Fabia also answered. I think this is the difference. So, if you don't show the personal pronoun, it's mostly seen as an accusative case, but sometimes her personal pronoun, onun, his, her, is hidden. So maybe it can, you know, it can be both, but we cannot really understand it from just one simple sentences, sentence. We have to see the full, for example, the context, the paragraph, to see whether that's either the accusative case or the possessive suffix from the genitive case and the possessive suffix. Okay. So, kitabı masa, kitap masada or kitabı masada. So, depending on the ending of the noun that we're at, attaching the locative suff, suff, luff, <laughs> locative case to, sometimes it changes from the de, da into the te, ta. Okay, so I'm going to answer, uh, I'm going to explain that in a moment. Don't worry. So, uh, we have certain sounds that change when they're you know for example if a verb if a noun ends in one of these p ch t k letters and if a suffix that we're attaching it to has either starts with a vowel sound like the u from the accusative case or for example like the locative case sometimes it also changes so the locative case has two variations as i mentioned it can either be de da or because of the consonant assimilation, changing of the consonant, it can become the te, ta suffix, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you now. Let me make this bigger. So uh, let's write one example, just a second. So, uh, so for example, masa, da, and, the masa word on the table ends in a vowel sound. So basically there is no change. But for example, if you want to say uh, there is a, uh, there is a cat <laughs> on the book. So let's assume that the book is really a book like an encyclopedia or like a really book, a big book for showing the maps of the world. So it's like an A2 size map, um, book map. So how would we first try to, tr let's try to first uh, translate the sentence into Turkish. So I, I want you to first uh, not think about it. So there are people in our lesson who have, maybe intermediate level Turkish, maybe even advanced. So let's first see if can you write the, uh, not for Gurpret, but just uh, also other intermediate level uh, students who are joining this lesson. Can you translate the sentence into Turkish? Okay. We have an, uh, another answer from Mon C. So it's basically Kedi Kitapta. Let's see if it's correct. Actually, let's write on the next page. 
You can write it differently actually. E, kitapta bir kedi var. So, kedi kitapta is the cat is on the book. But this one is there is a cat on the book. So it's more uh, similar to the sentence that I was writing. Oh, kitapta bir kedi var. Also, yeah, kitapta bir kedi var. Uh, so as you can see, let's look at the noun that we attached the locative case to. So kitapta, so on the book. So as you can see, we have some sound changes. So when we said, uh, when we when I men mentioned that the locative case has four different variations, right? So de, da. So according to vowel harmony, sometimes it's the e variation, sometimes a, and there's also consonant variation, right? And that's te, and there's a ta variation, kitab ta. So. When do we use de, da, and when do we use theta? It's basically this. When there's te, te, uh, te, te, and ke, pe, che, te, ke. So when a noun like kitap or, for example, uh, let's say havuch. Havuch is carrot. I know it won't uh, make some, any sense, but let's just see it. So hauch means carrot. Let's say on the carrot, right? So because hauch ends in this consonant, the special consonant that I mentioned, right? So yes, so because of this letter, if you want to say on the carrot, we say hauch. Ah. Why? Because we need to add the te variation of the locative case due to this letter. So. If it was, for example, uh, arch, arch also means tree, it would be on the tree means arch ta. So it's basically just because of the letter, okay? So when you see the pe, che, te, ke letters at the end of a noun, instead of the de, da variation, you focus on the te, ta variation. So uh, you will also see the same thing when we're looking at the ablative case in a moment so it's the same when you see the noun that we attach the suffix to ends in one of these four letters p ch t k you change it to the t variation certain suffixes like the accusative suffix have a lot a lot of different variations so when we attach the accusative suffix as you saw in this one kitab this time the U sound didn't change, but instead the B sound changed to the P, B, uh, P sound changed to the B sound. So there are different variations depending on the suffix. So the, each suffix has its own rules that you need to follow. But the good thing about this is the rules are not that difficult. They're really simple, at this level at least. <laughs> In intermediate level Turkish, you will see even more exceptions, more rules that you have to follow. but after some time, it becomes automatic. And if you're doing a lot of Turkish reading, which I would recommend that you do, you will see the rules inside those sentences and they're just repeated and repeated and repeated, okay? So let's, well, because we did the locative case, let's do a simple uh, exercise. So in this exercise, I'm gonna share my screen now, one second. Uh, in this exercise, I will basically want you to either write the de, da, or the te, ta variation. Okay? Let me find it. Ah. Okay. Let me first share my screen just a second. So this, this is a basic sentence, a uh, basic uh, locative case exercise that I would like you to try it. We will do a lot more difficult exercises, don't worry. <laughs> Let me first stop sharing this, then share the new page. Huh, okay. Okay, can everyone see it? I hope so. I hope everyone can see it. Huh. Okay. So, in this sentence, we're using the present continuous tense. 
We learned the present continuous tense in our last week's lesson. If you remember, it's ER, right? Okay, so this is a really easy exercise. I would like you to add the correct vowel and correct consonant assimilation variation, okay? So you can write the number for beer instead of writing the full sentence. You can beer, then choose the add the uh, correct answer. So for beer, it's da, de, or ta, te, or iki. For two, then write it. Let, I'm going to check the comments. And if there's any mistake or any questions, I will answer them. So I want to give you a minute for you to quickly do this exercise. Okay, let's see if you can correctly use the correct vowel variation and the consonant variation for the locative case. I'm looking at the answers, everyone. I'm waiting for your answers. I'm giving you one minute. <laughs> While you're doing the exercise, I'm gonna do some drinking. Just water, not beer or any alcohol at the moment. <laughs> So sandalye, if you don't know the words, the meaning of these words, let me uh, translate them this for you. Sandalye means chair, araba is car, the one that we drive. Koltuk is the one, this, this is koltuk in a way. I'm not koltuk, koltuk is the long sofa that we sit on. Ev is house, konser, concert, araba as in car, balcon, balcon is uh, balcony that you would maybe sit when the weather is nice. At that moment, the weather is not that nice, so maybe it's better to sit inside. Salon is the living room, saloon, mutfak, kitchen, jatte, street, Autobus, bus, bar, and is bar. Okay, so let's see the first three answers. So, sandal, yeah. So, the first thing you have to be careful about is if it ends. So, let's look at the final vowel inside sandal, yeah. So, it's the a sound. So, we have to choose the closest sound inside the suffix. So it ends in a vowel, so we don't have to worry about changing the de letter to te. We just need to focus on the vowel harmony. Because sandalia ends in the e sound, we have to say sandalia de oturior. So it's not da, but sandalia de. Okay? Salon and mutfak. Salon is living room. Mutfak is kitchen. So, Gurpet, be sure to, if you know, the vowel harmony, if you don't know, vowel harmony, I would suggest that you also check out our speaking Turkish in 30 days lesson. You can probably find the videos in this YouTube channel. So you need to first focus on the vowel harmony. So don't think about, okay, should I change de to te? For the first thing that you have to focus on is you have to choose the correct vowel harmony. So there is the da and the de. So a and the e. So sandalye on number one, ends in the A sound. So we, the closest suffix variation in this, the, for the locative case, is not da, but de, right? It's, there's an A sound, right? Sandalye. For the second one, it's araba. So araba ends in the A, and there's also A here. So we don't have to think about anything else. We say araba da, right? So Fabiola, let me look at your sentences. So, okay, so I think you know this. Sandalye de, right? Ends in the e, so we choose sandalye de. Araba, arabada. Yeah, be sure to check them, Gurpret. So be sure to especially focus on vowel harmony. So because it's the basis of Turkish language, everything is focused on how harmony. When we're choosing the suffixes, we first have to focus on vowel harmony, then think about consonant assimilation and dot, dot, dot, and anything else. So mastering vowel harmony is not hard. Because in Turkish, there are uh, eight vowel sounds, and that's about it, okay? So, sandal yede, arabada, okay, koltuk. So, koltuk ends in the K letter, and because K, P, C, T, K is one of the special letters, we have to const do constant assimilation, so the D changes to T, right? So, koltukta, 
e, number four balkonda good salonda mutfak again this is the K letter mutfakta number seven evde number eight konserde number nine arabada number ten caddede so it looks like there's too many days but cadde and the day are separate so don't mix them otobüste so p c otobüste p c t k and s i forgot to mention the s letter so there's uh, one one easy way to remember which letters are affected from this consonant assimilation is f s k ç ş h so this is one of the words there are different variations so focus on the words that i made them uh, the letters that i made bigger so the f s t k ç ş h p so if you see a noun that ends with one of the consonant letters in this fıstık şahap so şahap the fıstık the uh, not make name not maker fıstık is what what is fıstık in english i forgot fıstık <laughs> uh, it's not basic i think right pistachio the pistachio seller or pistachio yeah pistachio seller şahap so if you need to remember the consonant assimilation letters you know, that are affected from chain the change the pistachio seller shahab will help you <laughs> it's the consonant letters so autobus i forgot to mention the s letter so i there are a few letters i forgot to add yeah my mistake sorry about that so if you see a noun ending with these letters it the da changes to theta so autobus uh let's look at autobus t so it's not autobus de actually it's autobus t yeah so yeah so it was my mistake for not mentioning those letters autobus t okay and fıstık şahap don't forget so bar da okay so do you have any other questions that you didn't understand with the locative case i hope everything is okay i hope you understood the locative case the locative case is basically at on in fıstık fıstık is pistachio so uh, pistachio is actually we use another word we say we say shan shan fist uh yeah shan fist or shan fist or we sometimes say uh, let me actually change this we say antip fist we say uh shan first so we don't just simply say fustuk we say shan first shan, shan or shan is like a location or place antep is a, a city in turkey so it's the fustuk is the pistachio of antep so there are different variations in turkey so maybe you like to eat them <laughs> I like to eat them a lot. Actually, I I plan to eat them after after this lesson ends. So fustuk, but fustukçu uh, is the chu suffix is the suffix for uh, occupations, professions. Fustukçu, for example, are uh, what can we say? Fustukçu lastik. Lastik is tire. Lastik is uh, tire. For example, like a mechanic. Or there are a lot of different variations. So the ch suffix is another variation for adding uh, derivational nouns, making derivational nouns. Okay, Sham, uh, yeah, Sham is in Syria, not in Turkey. Antep is in Turkey. <laughs> My geography is really bad. Yeah, we eat that a lot in Turkey. So yeah, I mean it's one of our one of the best nuts in the world, I think. <laughs> okay, so. Be careful with these letters that the consonant letters that I mentioned. So if you see these consonant letters at the end of a noun, basically there will be constant assimilation. Sometimes the not ending of the letter changes. Sometimes the suffix changes. I will explain that. Okay. Okay. So let's move on to our next case marker. So let me uh, close this share screen. Let me focus on the other share screen. Uh, 
Okay. So let's go to back to our London lesson. Okay. So we did the locative case. We did some exercises on it. And now let's look at our next one. Let's look at the ablative case before we do the dative. So the ablative case. So do you know what ablative means? So most of you don't know the, what ablative means. So ablative means point of departure so in a way so ablative means origin point of or coming from okay so when you see the ablative case it basically means in this meaning so there are similar to the locative case there are two variations then done and there is the 10 ton variation okay Okay. Yeah, I mean, Turkish and Hindustan, the Hindu culture, have a lot of similarities because, I mean, we may have a connected history in the past. I mean, the uh, ancient Turks that, were, that came from northern part of the world, from Asian part, and they had a lot of interaction with other cultures, right? Sing? I don't understand what you were saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, I'm going to continue our lesson. Uh, maybe you can write what, I get, uh, what you're asking me there. Okay. So ablative case. Let's go back to ablative case. Ablative, ablative case is similar uh, in, conjun in conjugation. So like the locative case was then, de, da, the theta, the ablative case is then dan, ten tan, right? So, and because of that, we have to follow the similar rule. So, fustik to shahab rule again, then we're adding it. So, in English, we use the ablative case as we usually from, the from suffix. Or, yeah, anything that may, anything that we're talking about from. So, from the house, from school, from the fridge, right? So be sure to follow the Fustikje uh, Shahab rule again. So I'm going to make these letters bold. So when you see a noun that ends with these letters, the de letter, then done, either becomes ten or tan. Okay? So let's say, uh, let's make it a more difficult sentence. I came from, let's say, England. And let's write another sentence. I uh, bought, this is for my intermediate level, maybe pre intermediate level. I bought my, a uh, car from uh, the shop. Ah, fustuk to shop. Okay, let me explain it again. So fustuk to shop, uh, basically meaning these letters, the consonant letters in this phrase, the fe, se, te, ke, che. She, he, pe. If you see these, you know, these letters are basically one of the um, ways to remember when uh, the suffix changes or when the noun changes. So at this level, you don't have to worry about the noun changing. Okay. So at this level, if you see a noun ending with one of the consonants in this phrase, it's not then done, it's Ten ton. So you have to change the de letter to the te. Okay, that's basically it. That's that's the rule for this. You don't have to worry about anything else. So okay. So Fabiola, in, what is <laughs> England in Turkish? So England in Turkish is Ingiltere. Okay. So because. England is a proper noun, 
when we're adding this ablative case to the ending of proper nouns, we need to use an apro apostrophe. So this, so Ingiltere, so it ends in a vowel, right? So, and because it ends in a vowel, we don't have to worry about the fistic to shahapro, there's no changing. So we only focus on the last vowel, okay, it ends in a e. So we have uh, this closest sound for this is then, right? Ingiltere, then, geldim. So let's copy paste this here. Ingiltere, then, geldim. Okay, so what about the second one? Okay, so pazar, okay, it's not a wrong word. Uh, it's okay. So pazar is not a wrong word. Pazar is like a bazaar, right? I mean, where you buy food, maybe clothes. So for the cars, it be, would be like a bigger shop. So maybe we can say, uh, for shop, we can say dükkan, but for uh, car uh, shops, we say uh, so gallery, right? Actually, I should have wrote the gallery. Gallery, no, for cars. So instead of from the shop, from let's say from the gallery, it makes more sense because it's not fruit or anything else, right? So if you want to say, I bought my car from the gallery. So it's almost, your answer was almost correct. Uh, but instead, let's say it like this. Arabamı galeriden aldım. So we can say it uh, in different ways. We can say galeri den araba mı. So the mı here is the acquisitive. Arabamı galeriden arabamı aldım. So we can actually change the orders. It's, it's not fixed all the time. We have a lot of exceptions here. Okay. So it's arabamı galeriden aldım. Okay, so let's do a quick exercise again, like we did with the locative case. So let's make this a little bit harder. So I'm gonna open a picture this time. I'm gonna write maybe the words. Okay, one second. So let me stop the sharing. Let me share my new screen. Penjera. Yeah, uh, for compound nouns, if uh, compound nouns are a bit, yeah, it follow it basically you have to follow the log, uh, the pos genitive possessive structure, like uh, okul müdürü, like this one, for example, okul müdür, okul müdürü, like the one I let me also write it here. That's a possessive. Uh, comp uh, compound okul müdür so that's a different topic I mean we did the genitive case and the possessive suffixes lesson a while back maybe five no three four weeks ago I didn't mention the compounds the possessive compounds because it's a more difficult lesson I did you know talk about it a little maybe if there's need for it we can do a lesson about it so that's different. Okay, so let's look at this exercise. So can you see the image? I hope you can see the image. I may have to make it closer. So first, actually, let's look at the first two. Then we will look at the other ones. So there are people doing certain things. Or, I mean, some of the questions, some of the sentences will be a bit more difficult. You can use your imagination. So as you remember, the ablative case is means from, meaning I want from, or I came from, I'm scared of. Also, there's a usage in Turkish uh, here. So I'm scared of means we use it like, this then or pure. So I haven't taught you this. 
So if you want to say I'm scared of something, we don't use the of suffix like the nun or un suffix. We say dan korkmak. Okay. Okay. So uh, the for number four is also much more difficult. So maybe you can understand quickly make the first one. I think D that our friend here uh, made the first one correctly. Okuldan geliyorum or işten geliyorum or kütüphaneden uh, geliyorum kütüphane is library right so coming from a place so for the number three yes fareden right fare is rat mouse so if you want to say i'm scared of mice or mouse you can say fareden korkuyorum right Korkuyorum. Let me write it here. So it's basically the structure. Fareden korkuyorum. Okay, so let's see if you can figure out what to write for number two and number four. So let's look at number two. So what do you think the number two is ta talking about? So this could be more suitable for uh, maybe not beginner, but elementary or pre-intermediate level Turkish learners. So I don't want to just focus on beginner ones. If you can understand it, it's okay. You write the sentence. If you don't, I will explain them. I mean, it's, the focus is more on beginner lessons, but sometimes I will add some more difficult structures. So I think our friend here, our customer is saying, I want uh, the soup. I want the soup. Okay, let me actually make it bigger. One second. So let's look at only for this one. So they're asking, I want the soup with the tomato, right? Uh, yeah, uh, you can watch this lesson later as a video lesson, so not a live lesson. So when the lesson finishes, you can watch it as a video lesson, so don't worry. So, <clears throat> so let's look at the structure. This structure is an interesting structure. It's, I want... Uh, dot, dot, dot. So it's not a simple soup, right? Yeah, it's soup or tea. It can be soup or tea. I don't know. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter, right? So, but this is an interesting structure. Uh, for example, we will also you have to use a possessive compound in it. So I want bread fresh from the oven. Okay. So Risse, how would you say something like this? Can you write this sentence in English? Okay, write, write that sentence. Okay, so this sentence, okay, is nice. It's almost good. But it's not a simple, also, it's not a simple tea. So it's a special tea, right? Maybe tea, like a winter tea. Sometimes I like to drink winter tea at coffee shops. Uh, sometimes I like to drink uh, tomato soup or I want a tomato soup at a restaurant. So we can say it's something like this. Uh, tomatesli çorbadan istiyorum. So this is more useful for maybe elementary level students. So domates is tomato in Turkish. Domatesli is with tomato. Chor oh, not chorda. Why did I write chorda? <laughs> Just a second. Let me fix it. Yeah. So, domatesli chorba is a compound. Yeah. Yeah, you can also say it like that. So, let's first look at this sentence. Domatesli chorba is a uh, soup. So, tomato soup. But... If you literally translated it, soup with tomato. So I want that. So I'm selected. So I want it from that. That's why there's this structure. It's not 
domatesli çorba istiyorum. So there are different variations. Maybe the waiter is saying, okay, there's this soup, there's this soup, and there's this soup. And then you say, okay, I want the soup with that one. So domatesli çorbadan istiyorum. Or let's look how, let's see how we can make this hot tea without sugar. So you can say it in a similar way. So uh, şeker çay So let's say it like this. I mean, it's not used that much, but for example, if they're giving you choices, okay, we have this tea, we have this kind of tea, we can we have this kind of soup, we have this kind of meal. Then you say, okay, I want that one. Then you can use the ablative case. So şekersiz çaydan, şekersiz sıcak çaydan istiyorum. So when the person that you're talking to gives you options, we have A, we have B, we have C, we have D, then you can say, I want D. Then you have to use the ablative case. I want that, I want from that. So it doesn't make sense when you're thinking that in English, but you shouldn't think in English. I mean, in the first place, because there are a lot of prepositions in English that translate the Turkish completely different. We have case markers. We don't have the same structure of English. So you have to focus on how it's you know used in Turkish. Ondan, from that. So ondan is meaning I want that, I want it from there. So there's mumut, there's action. I'm taking it from here. So when the person is the waiter is speaking, you're choosing that and you're like imaginary pulling of that object. I want it that much. Please give it to me. So şekersiz çay or domatesli çorba. That's why we use it like that. Okay. So this would be domatesli çorba dan istiyorum. Ablative case. Dan istiyorum. Ondan istiyorum. I want that one. Okay. Let's look at another one. So we looked at this one. Okay. So this structure, the ablative case. For this one, oops, can we see it? Ah, sorry about that. This is a more difficult structure. So from to, this means from to. So in English, there are, we can say the uh, children are crossing the street, right? The children are crossing the street. But in Turkish, the word for the verb for crossing can be used in different ways. So to cross in Turkish, yeah, so we can say uh, ya geçmek. So I wrote it in the comments. Karşıya geçmek. But we don't say karşıya geçtim. I crossed the street. Karşıya geçtim. So here, the yeah, there's a dative case actually. Karşı. Karşı means opposite. And there's a dative case. We haven't learned that yet. Karşıya to the opposite. There's movement to the opposite. Geçmek is to pass. I pass to the opposite. But instead, we have a different structure. It's written as karşıdan. Karşıya geçtim. One second. Actually not karşıdan. I mean, uh, well, we can say it in different ways. So let me write this one that I mentioned. So çocuklar karşıdan karşıya geçti. Karşıdan Karşıya, from one side to the other, from to. So the dative case is basically to. I went to school, okula gittim, karşıya gittim. So you can see the dative case also used here. So I'm going to quickly explain the dative case and we're going to do some exercises in a moment. This structure is more suitable for pre-intermediate maybe, intermediate level students. But 
e, the basic usage for ablative is from, right? Okuldan geldim. Dolaptan, buzdolabından sandviç aldım. I took a sandwich from the fridge. But here, from to. It means from one part, from street to another. And geçmek means to pass. So from one street to another, the children passed. This is basically what it means. Okay? Karşıdan karşıya. From here to there. Any questions? Do you have any other variations, any different kind of sentences that you would like to use for this? You can also use a different sentence completely, but still use the structure if you want to. I'm looking at the chat box. Okay? So if you have any other uh, things that you would like to write me, please write them in the comment section. Okay, so karşıdan karşıya. So ablative case. Okay, so let's quickly remember the dative case. So I'm going to close this share screen. Let's go back to our note, no, our lesson page. One second. Uh, where is it? Okay. So let's quickly remember what the ablative case was. Ablative case is basically a or so there's a buffer letter here this time. One second, I'm not uh, ablative, it's not ablative, it's the dative case. Ablative, we just learned it's then done. The dative case is basically a a. Okay, so there are different usages, different ways to use the ablative case. Uh, okay, so let, let me first answer this qu send question. So how would I say I helped a old lady cross the street? So let's say it. Uh, this is going to be a more difficult sentence, though. This is not uh, a good sentence for beginner or intermediate levels. So, yaşlı bir kadına karşıdan karşıya geçmesine yardımcı oldum. So, you will probably see the structure them in the middle part. But this is not an easy sentence. This is an intermediate level sentence. There is an infinitive structure, mesine, masına. And there's a, a lot of suffixes. But you basically, think, uh, you basically can see karşıdan karşıya. Geçmek, geçmesine, for her. So I helped a woman. There's an ablative, uh, dative case. Kadına yardımcı oldum. Kadına yardımcı oldum. Yardımcı olmak means to assist, to help. I helped an old woman with what? With crossing from one part of the street to the other. So this is really difficult. But if you know how to use difficult structures, then, then it's okay. But there's the infinitive. There's a lot of case markers, like the dative, two times, kadına, karşıya. There's the ablative in karşıdan. And there is the accusative suffix after geçmesi. Well, not the accusative, actually. The possessive suffix, geçmesine yardımcı oldum. Her, I'm helping her. Okay. Or you can say kadına yardımcı oldum. I helped the woman. So yaşlı kadına yardımcı oldum. I helped an old woman, the old woman. Okay, so let's go back. The dative case. So let's hurry it up a little because it's almost an hour. So dative case means to. So towards something. Like basically, okul a gittim. So we use the buffer letter that you see here. This is called the not bugger but buffer letter. Yeah. So there are different ways, different uh, expressions for the buffer letter. Sometimes they say pronominal letter, something like that. I forgot. So if you see, for example, uh, Hastane. So if you see a noun that ends in a vowel sound, 
So this is not the constant assimilation. Don't mix it with the constant assimilation, not the first to shout. It's just a buffer letter. So if you see a noun, like noun, like hastane, so okul ends in a consonant, but hastane ends in a noun. So you simply add the buffer and hastane. Hastane gittim. I went to the hospital. So that's it. Just focus on whether hastane or the noun ends in a vowel. If it ends in a vowel, add the, add the buffer letter. Focus on the vowel harmony. Choose either from ye or ya, and that's about it. So I went to the hospital. I went to school. Or let's say kütüphane also ends. Kütüphane means library. And it also ends in a vowel letter. Kütüphaneye gittim. That's it. Okay. Any questions with this one? The dative case is probably one of the easiest because you don't have to worry about the constant assimilation for shahab. You don't have to worry about the uh, vowel changes. You just have to add the buffer letter. Yeah. If it ends in a vowel sound, if the noun ends in a vowel sound. Okay, now let's do another exercise. So this time it's going to be uh, a bit more different. So let's, okay, so this is going to be mixed, okay? So you will see some sentences, just a second. So you will see some sentences, you will have to either use the ablative, the locative, or the dative case. Okay, let me share it. So let me make it bigger. So first let's look at this A. Ah. Okay. So it's either the ablative, so it's either ablative, uh, not, uh, not ablative, locative, which is the, the, the, the ablative, and tan, tan, tan, or the dative, which is, yeah, oops, or, yeah. Uh, one second. yeah. Okay, so you have to use one of these. So let's see if we can correctly make this. So locative is at, on, in, ablative, from, dative, to. Okay, so while you're looking and trying to answer this question, these questions, I'm going to take a sip of my water. So can anyone answer, can anyone give me the answers to these sentences? So these are really easy sentences. So you just have to choose from these three options. And if you don't know the meaning of one of the words here, be sure to ask them to me, okay? So, Gurpet, Tidat, Nafisa, Risse. Fabiola, I think you had to go, I think you left. Uh, we had another friend here, Monsi, uh, if she hasn't left. Salim, uh, Erkan, can anyone else give me the answer to these? <laughs> I can give you the answer, but I want to give you time so you can do the uh, exercises with me instead of just giving me the giving you the answers. So, biz Samsung geliyoruz. So, gelmek means come to come. So, there's movement. So they're coming from, right? From uh, at one place from. Okay, so basically, I mean, uh, how can I do it? Maybe I can post these questions at the Google Docs document. So, and I can give you the link so you can try it out. Okay, I'm just gonna post the questions. 
so at a later time when you're more available you can also try it out by yourself okay while i'm posting in please i'm waiting for the answers okay i think there's a one of our friends gave the answer i'm gonna look at it in a moment i'm giving you a little bit more time don't worry don't don't be sad if you didn't understand anything or if you have difficulty uh, doing these exercises it's okay practice makes perfect okay so i will be giving the link to the google docs when this lesson ends so you can check out a few more exercises that i posted the images you can do it on your free time okay so this samsundan geliyoruz pearl berry islander teşekkür ederim so you were watching the lesson but you weren't writing anything be sure to join the lesson don't just simply watch give me answers or ask me questions okay <laughs> okay so second one since we're almost get, uh, running out of time i'm going to explain them so i want something so i think we did this structure just a moment ago right i want that right i want that tomato soup so which suffix did we use? Which case marker we use? The ablative, right? Then Shebnem den kitap istiyorum. So I want books from Shebnem. Shebnem den kitap istiyorum. So number three. So here there's a market and you're buying something at the market. What are you buying? Water. So, so sen market te so it ends with the te letter fıstık tu şahap sen markette su alıyorsun you're buying water at the market good number four so çıkmak to exit so when we say exit we have to use from o okuldan çıkıyor Okuldan çıkıyor, exiting from the school, right? So that four is dan, dan, right? Dan, okuldan. Number five, elma is apple. Almak, buy or receive, depends on what you want to say. So we can say we're buying uh, from these. So we're buying these apples. It's similar to number two. Kitap istiyorum. So, biz bu elmalardan alıyoruz. Biz bu elmalardan alıyoruz. So, the ablative case is not just used as from. As you can see, we can use it with a lot of different verbs. So, this is called the ablative object. There's the dative object. There's the accusative object. Hopefully, I will explain these in more detail in the next or upcoming lessons. So certain verbs require certain case markers. So almak, ondan almak. I want that one. I'm taking, I'm buying from that one. Biz bu elmalardan alıyoruz. Number six. So onlar, banka. So they're phoning the bank, phoning to. So there's action towards the bank something happening towards the bank as you can see here it's not just going to it's also calling when you're calling someone we can use it with different say uh, suffixes you can use the acoustic case bankayı aramak but when you use telephone etmek to phone you have to use the dative bankaya telefon ediyorlar bankaya telefon ediyorlar so as I mentioned before, certain verbs, phrasal verbs, use certain case markers. So you have to memorize these. I mean, uh, we can do an exercise later, but hopefully you will understand more in the upcoming lessons. Onlar bankaya telefon ediyorlar. But if it was aramak, to call, onlar bankayı arıyorlar, then it's different. Okay, so finally, number seven. So hoşlanmak also uh, uses the ablative case. Hoşlanmak means to be interested in. 
ondan hoşlanmak. For example, ben Ayşe'den hoşlanıyorum. So I'm interested in Ayşe. So I like Ayşe. Hoşlanmak to be interested in. So ben müzik ve spordan hoşlanıyorum. So I'm interested in music and sports. So this is more of an introduction to pre-intermediate Turkish. So it's not just a simple usage. As you can see, I told you that the case markers are not just at, on, in, and from, and to. There are a lot of different usages. So you will see these case markers used in even more complex structures. So this is not a complex structure. This is just a, the case markers used as an object of a verb. Okay? Any questions, my friends, my dear students, my dear friends who are watching this lesson from all over the world? I hope this was a nice lesson for you. I hope you saw what case markers are in some way, maybe in a simple way. But at least you saw what we can make with case markers, like the locative, the dative, and the ablative. If you don't know the first basic usages, first focus on the basic usage, then you can focus on these kinds of usages. So I wanted to implement some beginner and intermediate uh, usages so that you will see that you shouldn't just focus on the basic at, on, in, from, to meanings of these case markers. Okay. So we came to the end of our lesson. So we've been doing this lesson for more than an hour now. I hope this was a nice lesson for you. So I'm going to copy the link of this Google Docs that we I took notes on. So I put, posted some uh, exercises like this one that you just saw. So you can visit the Google Docs link. And I will post it in the comments. I will pin it. So visit that link. And be sure to do these exercises. Thank you for everyone that joined the lesson. I want to especially thank everyone that helped with the lesson, gave their answers, exercise, did the exercises, asked me questions. So whenever you enter this lesson, think of this lesson as a group private lesson, okay? So it's a free group private lesson. So be sure to use this time. Be sure to uh, ask me a lot of questions. So the next uh, live lesson. So usually I do the live streams, live lessons every Sunday. So I'm going to do an announcement this week. So it's probably going to be on the 13th. Okay. So uh, it's probably going to be on 13 March, same time. Let me just take a note here. So I do the lessons always at the same uh, times. So it's, I think the next one is going to be on the either the 13th, if everything is OK, or on the 12th. I usually do announcements. So you can visit. You can see the announcements. Let me copy the link here, just a second. So be sure to check the announcements on the community tabs on this app. So visit the channel, the YouTube channel or Turkish Olic. Visit the community tab. I do a lot of announcements there. OK. The next lesson will probably be on the 13th of March at 7 Turkish time. So it's GMT plus 3. So we have to be careful uh, that your time is also you know, <laughs> correct. <laughs> be sure to enter the lesson on time. If you come at the end of the lesson, it's going to be a shame. I'm mean, going to miss a lot of things. I'm going to do another announcement. So if you're interested in group Zoom classes, so we have two teachers at the moment. One of them is me, and one of them is Memnuha teacher. So <laughs> Alonk, you're a bit late. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, be sure to watch the video lesson, OK, Alonk? So if you're interested in the group lessons, so these are not free lessons, these are paid lessons, but they're going to be really cheap compared to my private lessons. If you're interested in joining these lessons, I'm going to do an announcement hopefully this week about the prices, about the schedule. So there will be A1 group, A2 group, B1, B2, 
So the groups are going to be probably minimum four people, maximum six people. The price is going to be pretty affordable. So if you're interested in them, please send me an email. This one, this email, info at turkishaholic.com. I will explain the content. I will explain everything. I'm going to make a page on the website so and also an announcement. So if anyone's interested in doing group lessons with me or our other teachers. So A1, A2, B1, B2. So four groups. So But we're probably going to first start with the A1 and A2 groups. Okay. It depends on the amount of people. But we need at least minimum four people. Then uh, the payments... So in one, it's probably going to be two lessons in one week. So one and a half or two hours one day and two hours another day in one week. So in one month, it's going to be 12 lessons, I hope. So it's going to be pretty uh, detailed, but it's going to be a nice lesson. So if you're interested in these lessons, please send me an email. I'm going to do an announcement, official announcement later on. Uh, so check out the community tabs, okay? So don't forget, our next lesson is on 13th of March, okay? So be sure to be on time. So be sure to be at least five minutes, even five minutes before the lesson. You can watch this lesson as a video lesson after it's finished. If you So if you're late for the lesson, be sure to watch it as a video. Ask me questions, write comments. If you're interested, be sure to check out our premium video courses on our website. So become a premium member and do a lot of exercises watch the videos that that that <laughs> so i'm gonna cut it short it's been more than one an hour and i hope to see you again on 13 march at 7 at the evening turkish time next week okay be sure to check out the announcements okay if there's any sound, uh, time change i'm gonna mention them thank you again for attending this lesson and I hope to see you in the upcoming weekend. Take care. Teşekkür ederim. Görüşürüz arkadaşlar. İyi akşamlar.